Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from the 2010 IMO, problem number four. This is a pretty nice geometry problem and I suggest you try it out for a minimum of 20 minutes, ideally an hour to two hours, but not more than three hours. If on the other hand, you would like to go along with us, I suggest you pause, draw the picture and get your first ideas out on paper for the next 10 minutes. And now, without further ado, let's begin. The first rule of geometry is draw good diagrams. Now, after you drew a good diagram, the first thing you might notice as you read through the problem is that we first get these points K, L, M defined, and then at the very end, S just magically pops up. What this tells us is that we could analyze the picture, the situation, without s, see what condition needs to hold for us to have mk equal to ml, and then plug s in and see what changes. Now before we do anything, I want to point out that there is a principle in geometry which doesn't apply to other areas in competitive math. The principle is that geometry can really be solved in two different ways. One of the ways is going from the problem conditions and trying to get to the thing we need to prove, which is sort of solving the problem forwards. And the other way is looking at what happens when the problem condition is true and trying to see if there's another thing we could prove that leads to the problem condition being true. Here, I would like to begin by going backwards, seeing what happens when mk is equal to ml. Before inviting you to see what actually happens, let me mark the angles by gamma 1, gamma 2, beta 2, beta 1, alpha 2, and alpha 1. And now that you have all these angles together, look at what it is that is true it when mk is equal to ml. Well, connecting the ml and mk, we get that the angle mlb is equal to the angle mcb, which is gamma 1. And the angle blk is equal to bak is equal to alpha 2. Similarly, on the other side, we have the angle MKA is equal to MCA is equal to gamma 2 and the angle AKL is equal to ABL is equal to beta 1. So for MK to be equal to ML, we need gamma 1 plus alpha 2 to be equal to beta 1 plus gamma 2. And now that we have an idea as to what we need, let's go forward and see what it is we have. So now we're switching to going forward, which means let's see how can we take advantage of the fact that SC is equal to SP. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is sort of angle chasing. What we get from angle chasing is when we connect SP here. We use the fact that SC is tangent to the circumcircle of ABC which means this angle right here is beta, where beta is beta 1 plus beta 2, and alpha is alpha 1 plus alpha 2, and gamma is gamma 1 plus gamma 2. Now what we get from angle chasing is we get that the angle SPC is also beta plus gamma 2, so that means that the angle CSP CSP is equal to 180 minus this minus this, which is 180 minus 2 beta minus 2 gamma 2. Now we also know that the angles CSA must be equal to alpha minus beta. And combining these two together, we get that the angle PSA is equal to angle CSA minus angle CSP. And after some algebraic manipulation, what we get is that this angle right here is equal to gamma 2 minus gamma 1. And now that we have this angle being gamma 2 minus gamma 1, 
it leaves the angle SPA to be equal to alpha 2 minus gamma 2 minus gamma 1, which means the angle SPA is alpha 2 plus gamma 1 minus gamma 2. So now that we have that, let's mark it up. So this angle right here is alpha 2 plus gamma 1 minus gamma 2. Now I invite you to pause for 10 minutes and see if you can notice what it is we need to prove to finish. I hope you paused because what we have is SPA is alpha 2 plus gamma 1 minus gamma 2. Now, if the problem condition was true, then that by this thing up here would be equal to beta 1. But if this was beta 1, if the angle SPA was beta 1, we would have SPA beta 1 and SBP both beta 1. What this means is we would have SP be the tangent to the circumcircle of the triangle APB. So now that we know that we would need to have that, if the problem was true, let's see if we can prove that SP is in fact the tangent to APB. What you may also notice is that with this configuration, we don't need KLM. Now that we know what it is we need to prove, K, L, and M are totally useless to us. So now let's draw a nicer picture. What we need to prove is that MK is equal to ML. This is true if and only if alpha 2 plus gamma 1 is gamma 2 plus beta 1. Now, on the other hand, from SC is equal to SB, we get that this is true. Alpha 2 plus gamma 1 is beta 1 plus gamma 2. If and only if the angles SPA and SPB are equal. Now, if these angles are equal, that would imply in both ways that the triangles SAP and the triangle SPB are similar because they would have all their internal angles equal. So now let's see if we can prove that these triangles are similar. Well, we have the angle, we have the angle PSA is equal to the angle BSP. And now we need to prove that SP over SB is equal to SA over SP. In other words, what we need to prove is that SP squared is equal to SB times SA. Now this is true because we know, what we do know is that SB times SA because SC is tangent to the circumcircle, we know that SB times SA is equal to SC squared, but because SC squared is equal to SP squared, we know that SP squared is also equal to SB times SA, which means that SP over SB is SA over SP, and combining that with the fact that PSA and BSP are equal, that gives us the triangles SAP and SBP are similar, which in turn means that the angles alpha 2 plus gamma 1 are equal to the angle beta 1 plus gamma 2, which implies MK is equal to ML. Now let's summarize this and write it up. We first define the terms, then SC equals SP and SC tangents to the circumcircle we have that SP squared is equal to SC squared is equal to SA times SB, which here implies SPA is equal to the angle SPB from the side angle side similarity rule because we have SA over SP is SB over SB and the angles PSA and BSP are the same. 
Now from here we have, from the SP is equal to SC, we have that the angles SPC and SCP are beta plus gamma 2, which in turn implies that the angle APC, which is equal to the angle SPA plus the angle SPC, which is equal to beta 1 plus beta plus gamma 2. But on the other hand, the same angle APC must sum up with the other two angles inside a triangle APC, i.e. angles PCA and the angle CAP, they must all sum up to 180. I know this is different from the solution, but it's basically the same thing, just going at it more simply. And from our definitions, we have that APC is equal to beta 1 plus beta plus gamma 2. PCA is equal to, where is it? PCA is gamma 2. And CAP is alpha 1 is equal to 180, which is also equal to the sum of all the angles in the triangle ABC, which is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus beta 1 plus beta 2 plus gamma 1 plus gamma 2. Now this condition implies that canceling out the gammas, gamma 2s, the beta and the beta 1 plus beta 2, the alpha 1s, we are left with beta 1 plus gamma 2 is equal to alpha 2 plus gamma 1. And now from here, what we say, we notice that MLK is in fact da -da 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 using the condition da -da 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 is equal to MKL. And we say this here implies that MK is equal to ML, which is our problem statement, so we are done. And as always, thanks for problem solving.